Wow, that was one of the things that came from the San Diego Comic-Con. It was a behind the scenes video from the Wheel of Time production team that gave us our first glimpses of season two of Amazon Prime's adaptation of Robert Jordan's enormously popular fantasy series. In today's video, we're gonna break down that one minute clip, scene by scene, clip by clip, and try to understand what we should expect in season two of Amazon's Wheel of Time. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers through The Dragon Reborn, the third book in the Wheel of Time series. We'll be talking about events that take place in the books to that point, so if you don't want to be spoiled, watch at your own risk. All right, if you have not seen it yet, I released a video breaking down all of the news and questions answered by Wheel of Time showrunner Rafe Judkins from Comic-Con. You can find a link to that video somewhere up here somewhere. But before we get into the breakdown, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to get more Wheel of Time book and TV show content. I've got over 300 videos up on the channel all about the Wheel of Time. Also check out the video sponsor, audible.com. Audible is the world's largest depository of audiobooks. Kate Redding and Michael Kramer, the readers of the Wheel of Time audiobooks, were guests at the very first ever WattCon, and they did a special reading for all the attendees. When they read the Wheel of Time, it's truly a performance. It's a totally different experience. If you have not tried audiobooks, you can get one for free by checking out my Audible link. You get a free book, and you really help support the channel. Just head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nabless and grab a free book. You don't even have to keep the service, but you still get to keep your book. Thank you to Audible. All right, let's dive into the Wheel of Time season two behind the scenes clip from Comic-Con. Now, one thing I want to make mention of before we get into this is that these clips are behind the scenes from a production standpoint. There's no CGI. The scenes are depicted not in post-production. They're not even shot from the angles we'll see in the show. I wouldn't jump to any crazy crazy, crazy conclusions about what we see, we can just try to take it in with a grain of salt. So here we get our very first look at what appears to be Iula Smart's Avienda standing next to two other Maidens of the Spear. Maybe Bane and Chiad? Now this is in the desert, but I do not believe it is in the waste. In fact, based on what we know about the filming locations and the director here, Sanaa Hamri, I'd be willing to bet that this is actually near the set in Foam. They have seemingly gone with a desert area for the area surrounding Foam. So, and we know this from previous leaks that Avienda and at least some of the Aya will be headed there as well. We then cut to this shot of Moraine, played by Rosamund Pike, and Land Mandragoran, played by Daniel Henney, walking up the beach. Now, now, this could be part of the additional storylines that they have spoken about adding to the story for Moraine and Lan. Based on the books, Moraine and Lan are barely in the Great Hunt. They spend most of the story off screen. Obviously, they can't do that with the two highest profile actors in the cast, but they did set up at the end of season one more for Moraine to do. Rafe mentioned in the Q&A that they would be following their book two plot, but with more depth and more to it. One thing of note here is that there is a leaked picture of a way gate in the water on a beach. That might be their destination because they're walking along the beach too, but who knows. Here we have some white cloaks moving at full gallop on armored horses. Now notice the same desert area that we saw with the Aiel. Also, make note of this trebuchet here. This will come up again. Also note, as they charge further, there is a white mist that appears. It looks almost like smoke, but also a mist. Could this be part of the final scenes of the Great Hunt where the Horn of Valir has been blown? Or is it just smoke from fires off screen? Well, here we get to see where they're creating that smoke and mist. And again, it doesn't necessarily explain why the smoke is on screen. In the Great Hunt, the mist comes once Matt Cawthon blows the Horn of Valir. The trebuchets imply some sort of attack or siege, and they could have set fire to some things. So having smoke being generated doesn't necessarily mean that this is for the horn, but it doesn't mean that it isn't either. And I think they deliberately knew that this would get us thinking about the Horn of Valir and the Heroes of the Horn. Here we have a very quick shot of some camels and a bunch of crew standing around behind the camera, except this person right here appears to be in an all red costume behind everybody else. I have no idea who this could be. So if you know, make sure to let me know in the comments of the video, but this person will come up again. Here we have another shot of this wheel that we previously saw in other photos. 
It appears to be a type of stockade in the sense that it has arm holds for somebody to be tied to a wheel. Now, this isn't something from the books, but if I had to guess, I would say that this is either a torture or punishment device either used by the Shan Chan or the White Cloaks. Here we have a close-up of one of the White Cloaks ready for battle. The face covering might make you think uh, Aeol at first, but this is clearly one of the Children of Light. Look at the pauldron, look at the sunburst on the chest. I love the level of detail, though, in the costume. It does seem that they've kind of upgraded the White, the white Cloak costumes, whether that's because they're in the desert and they're just wearing slightly different clothing, or if they just decided to revamp the costumes for season two, I like this design a lot better. Here we move to a shot of the Shinarans with Perrin right here in their party. Now I'm gonna guess that this is Barthana's manor in Kyrian. Will Tudor has been cast as Lord Barthanis, and given that Rafe confirmed that either Tyr or Kyrian would be in the show, I'm gonna lean that this is Kyrian, or maybe a manor near Kyrian. You can see Uno here as well, and we know that he didn't die at the end of last season as he was breathing, and Rafe confirmed that, but we also knew that he had been cast for season two, so it does appear that he will be a part of this group. I think directly behind this person here might be Lord Ingtar, but we'll look at him again later. Another thing of note here is that Perrin is carrying a sword. This is obviously an odd choice, as Perrin has never really been associated with a sword. He's been associated with axes and hammers, and given that he did use an axe to kill his wife, I could understand him not wanting to carry one, but it does seem an odd choice to have Perrin carrying a sword, given how close that Perrin is connected to axes and hammers in the books. So we'll have to see how that plays out and why that is. This right here is like likely Masima, played by Arnos Federovicius, and for whatever reason, he is playing an obnoxiously hot version of Masima. You can't see it here, but go look up his pictures. In this next scene, we get another look at a Waygate, but this time somewhere surrounded by palm trees and a forest. Now, this actually was shot in an oasis in the desert. Now, it remains to be seen if they mean this to be in an oasis or if they're just, they thought it was a cool place to shoot it. The Waygate is overgrown. Um, it's obviously been there a while, but it is clearly set somewhere that we have not been yet. Here we get a shot of the inside of a set of walls. Now this was filmed in Morocco and is likely the site of Falma. As the camera moves forward, we get some soldiers surrounding this figure here and this person here. Now these are likely Shan Chan soldiers and this is probably Lord Turok. This could be a truth speaker or some other servant to the Shan Chan blood, somebody who is responsible to serve Turok. But it does look like either a battle has happened and they're surrounding him or something like that. The area around it is sort of a disaster despite the Shan Chan tents, which is not typically how the Shan Chan camps are described. So I wonder if there was a scramble to get troops out and form battle lines or something that caused this messiness. See the insignia here? It isn't identical to the Shan Chan descriptor in the books, but it does appear to be the insignia of the Shan Chan Empire, which is again why I think this is all Shan Chan. So I'm certainly interested to understand what is going on in this scene. The next shot is of some people running away from something just before an explosion of fire coming from that direction that they're running from. See this man here? He is just leisurely drinking until the explosion comes. I think this is part of the Berendorf Studios backlot set that was built for this season. Geeky Eerie uncovered this. Uh, it is a fairly extensive set that was built for season two of the show in Prague. Now more on this in a bit. In this scene, we see Josha Stradowski's Randall 4 walking through a horribly lit alley with a torch. Now, there are some people behind him, and while it's hard to make out exactly who these people are, this right here does appear to be Lan, and this is probably Moraine. I could be wrong on that, but see, when I lower the color saturation a bit, you can see it quite a bit clearer. That's very clearly Lan. Here is another shot of Moraine and Lan on the beach, talking to each other this time instead of walking. Now, I'm very interested to understand what this scene is going to be, but I think, again, it's going to be associated with that way gate we saw on the beach. Next, we have this shot of a woman that is very hard to make out. However, when you crank up the exposure, it's pretty clear that this is Min Farsha, played by Kai Alexander. You can see here that she has a shaved side of her head, which is interesting. We know that Min is captured along with Egwene in the Great Hunt, and the Shan Chan blood often shave the sides of their head to show their position. The Sojin, the servants of the High Blood, will also shave one side of their head. It doesn't appear here that an entire side of her head is shaved, but it's a good guess that Min has been captured by the Shan Chan, and they learn what she can do with visions and she had to shave her head or something. That is my guess. Here we have Rand with his shaved head again walking through a village. Now this appears to be a village that looks very similar to the scene we saw with the area blowing up early. I think that this is the, again the Barandov Studios set in Prague. I think it's very possible that this could be the Forgate area in Kyrie. Now 
What do we know about the foregate and explosions? Fireworks. So I'm wondering if that is the cause of some of these explosions. We'll have to wait and see. Here we have a person that borrowed a wig from one of the Targaryens. Uh, I'm joking. But Rafe has mentioned that no one has guessed who this is correctly yet. The clothing leads me to believe it's a wise one, but it could just as well be an Aes Sedai. If you look in the background, it looks like there's a sun on the gate. Now, the two areas that are associated with the sun in the books would either be Kyrian with the rising sun or the sun burst which could be the Children of the Light. It could be either of those things. Maybe this is Pedro Nile. Maybe this is a flashback to Layman. Who knows? Let me know what you think in the comments of the video. Here we have Padan Fane walking through the halls of an unknown palace or fortress. Now this could either be Barthana's palace or possibly a palace in Falm. It could also be from the Dark Prince social that Wraith confronted. Although I doubt it because it's too bright of a tone. It just feels off to be something like that. Here we have a figure dressed in all black walking around in the night. I think it's pretty clear that this is Lord Helmet from Spaceballs. Okay, joking. I think it's pretty easy implication here that this is probably a Merdral. I think that's probably accurate. So here we have what appears to be a fortress structure with some women standing atop the structure. Now ignore the tents over here. Those are production related and not part of the scene. It's hard to make out who these people are, but this appears to be a person in red, the same as the person from earlier. Now, I'm very interested to see who that is and what this structure is gonna be used for. You can see over here that there are green screen panels that look like they're about to be hoisted up for a background. My guess is that they're gonna be using this as a base for filming and then adding CGI to change the surroundings or make it a higher tower or something like that. Here we have a shot of a battle taking place. Now you can see what looks like Shan Chan soldiers fighting against the White Cloaks. It looks to be loyal in the background as well in the very back. Now, this is probably a fight scene that has been very well choreographed. It's a little odd that Loyal is just standing there. It'll be interesting to see this from not a behind the scenes perspective, at least how it's cut. This is likely part of the ending battle that's taking place in the fortress uh, that we saw from earlier, but that's just my guess. Here we get our first shot of Egwene in the White Tower, and she appears to be packed to go somewhere, maybe, maybe foam. You can see her in her white novice dress. I'm wondering if this is right before she meets Leandrin, believe me a possibility. Here we are in the Hall of the Tower, covered with sand. I mean the Warder's Practice Yard, my bad. <laughs> Notice that they are practicing with spears. Now, I don't recognize any of the actors here. That could be Donal Finn, but I'm not sure. It's pretty hard to tell. Maybe this is that scene, though. We'll have to wait and see. I am not really a fan of reusing the set like this. I know I joked about this and I need to follow my own advice and realize that this is not completed footage, but I am not a fan of having the sets so obviously reused. Like find a park or do it outside somewhere and put the White Tower and CGI in the background. Uh, I just thought that this is too clearly the hall of the tower with sand on the ground. But it's behind the scenes. We'll have to wait till see how it comes out. Here are some more explosions in the Baradoff Studios set. Again, you can see people running away from the fire. Is it fireworks? Again, I think this might be fireworks. We'll have to see. Here we have a white cloak fighting against Avienda. And you can see by the hair that this is Iola Smart, or at least a stunt double or someone meant to look like her. Uh, I love that they are making the Aiel very acrobatic, though. I love that unique fighting style. I love that they move around. We get to see that in episode 7 cold open. Back here though, you can see a cage hanging from a pulley system. And I'd say this is very similar to how Gaul is described to be caged in the Dragon Reborn. We also know that Perrin is likely to rescue Avienda instead of Gaul based on the leaked audition script. So is this the scene where Perrin has released Avienda and they kill White Cloaks together in a very similar way to where Perrin and Gaul do it in the Dragon Reborn? Here is the money shot though. We've got a fade nailed to the door with the Shinarns and Perrin looking on. I am very happy this is in the show. I love that scene in the books. It makes Fane even more scary. I hope they lean into him being more crazy though in the show than they did in the first season. Because in the first season, he's more of a bad guy. I want him to be flat out crazy. So I think this person here is Lord Ingtar, played by Greg Chillingbury. Obviously, it's hard to tell, but I think this person here is Elias Machira, who is played by Gary Beadle. It's long been speculated that he would meet Perrin on the quest to recover the horn, either as being the sniffer and replacing Kirin, or what I think is more likely is that the group would meet him in their travels and that he would tag along for a bit, which I think is what's happened. Here we pan to a shot of a bald Yosha thinking and sitting on what looks to be a throne. I wonder if this is also from that Baron Dobb studio set. And here we have a shirtless land training with a sword. Nobody's going to complain about that. Now, the surroundings don't look like any of the other sets that you've seen. So again, is this the Italian 
set that we know Maureen and Liam filmed at. We have this shot here of a map with some pieces indicating military forces. Now, I've seen some speculate that this is a map of Tyr, possibly, and I don't think so. I think this is pretty clearly a map of Falm and Termon Head, with a small change to the actual map. Here is a actual map of Falm based on the books. The difference here is there is not a river in the books, but the city looks to be near a river in the show. Not a big deal, not a big change. The White Cloak forces appear to be surrounding the city and it looks to be a siege, or at least that they're planning for a siege. And the Shan Chan forces are in red with their ships and stationed around the city. You can also see a couple White Cloaks here in the background that indicates that this is from a White Cloak camp. So I would guess that this is them preparing for a battle or preparing for a siege they think they're going to go into. They probably have no clue what they're getting into. Here we have some night shots of what appear to be Shinaran soldiers fighting against the Shan Chan. And you can see Perrin right here. In this next clip, it appears to be the same fight scene, but it looks like people being dragged away by Shan Chan soldiers. Now this right here appears to be Perrin being dragged away, which begs the question, who is strong enough to drag Perrin by the leg? And although they don't look big enough, are these Ogier gardeners? That's about the only thing I can think that would be strong enough to drag Perrin around like a ragdoll. Here we get a quick shot of what is likely a Shan Chan noblewoman, possibly the High Lady Surah. Now there has been speculation that this is Karima McAdams, and I think that, that is very accurate based on looking at the lips and chin. And I know a number of people have superimposed Prima McAdams' face up on this, and it's pretty identical. So I think that's very obvious that this is Prima McAdams. Does that mean that she is playing High Lady Sura? Here we have a quick shot of somebody falling off a horse. And you can see right in front of the horse, there is a figure in black that appears to match the figure we saw earlier in the clip. It's probably a murder all again. And the very last clip of the teaser is a shot of this man here in all red again, swinging a sword. Now, is this the same figure in red that we saw earlier in the clips? I'm not sure about that, but also in this shot, there is a blink and you miss it cameo. We have Loyal again, and what appears to be Parent. No idea what this scene could be, but yet here they are. Now, keep in mind, this is behind the scenes, so it doesn't mean that they're meant to be in the scene but there they are. That's it from the clip from Comic-Con. There is an amazing amount to break down from a one minute video, especially when we've been starved for content like this. What did you think of the behind the scenes reel from season two? Are you more excited for season two now or less? What did you like? What didn't you like? Let me know in the comments of the video and make sure to respond to the pinned comments so we can keep track of all the responses. Huge thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. Without you, none of this content would be possible. You can see my top tier patrons on the screen now. If you'd like to become one of them check out my patreon page by clicking the link in the description of the video thank you again lastly check out my breakdown of the rafe judkins q a if you haven't seen it already to find out all the huge information dropped at the comic con panel just before this clip thank you again for watching and until next time peace out